What's up guys? Welcome back. As you can see, we have the 39 there behind us. And what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be taking you guys through our process based on preparing, fueling, and getting this boat in the water in order for a day out on the boat or just a simple day of fishing. Now, there may be some people watching that are thinking about buying a boat or maybe moving up to a boat of this caliber. And basically what this video is intended for is just to instill a little bit of confidence in you guys. And some of it's just for mere entertainment. Hopefully some of our viewers at home are enjoying this just because they like hanging out with us here on Life by the Bow. But I wanna thank Undoes It for sponsoring this week's video. So we're gonna hop up inside and get to work and show you guys what preparing this boat is all about. So throughout the video, I'm just going to be speaking my mind, giving you guys as many tips and tricks as possible and ultimately as much information as possible. And typically step one when we start we take the cover off the boat. Now we don't have the cover on the boat right now because we just did a service. So it sat out overnight, we got some rain, so things are a little wet. But typically once we put the cover on, the last thing we do is open up all of our hatches. And that's why the hatches are open. The reason why is because it prevents things like mildew from accumulating inside of the hatches. And especially if you're storing stuff inside of your boat, that moisture is just gonna make things really nasty. So we always leave everything open. So step number one, we always close everything up. Now moving forward, you can actually hear we have something running here inside of the console. And this is called the dry pod. Now, like I mentioned, we had some rain last night and the reason why I have the dry pod on inside of the console is just because this is where majority of our electronics live and we wanna make sure to keep things as dry as possible. Now, this is something that's used by professional cleaners for drying floors, carpet, upholstery, and in our case, we're using it for ventilation. As you can see, we have all this headroom and what the dry pod does is it actually pulls air from the top and redirects it from the side in a 360 pattern. Now, the dry pod is really compact, so it'll fit in tight spots like your bilge. And say you were to spill something in your truck, your house, your garage, you know, it's a perfect solution to dry things up as quick as possible. Ultimately, it's a handy product for any car, boat, or shop enthusiast, and it only uses one amp, so it'll run off of shore power or an inverter for hours. So if you guys are interested in the dry pod, we'll have a link down in the description, but let's go ahead and move towards the front. Same thing, we're just gonna close up every hatch up here in the bow, obviously, but the reason why I wanted to come up here, I just wanted to tell you guys, if you notice, there's nothing inside of any of the hatches and that goes the same throughout the entire boat. Before every wash and when I store the boat away, I take everything out of the boat. And the reason why I do that is number one, I like to clean every gutter, I like to clean every hatch just because I like running a tight ship. But in addition to that, we're always switching back and forth between boats. So if we want to fish out of the Pathfinder one week, I take all the gear out so that way I can transfer it into the other boat. Another thing that's great about doing that is you just keep all your gear tucked away out of the elements. In our case, we store all of our stuff inside in air conditioning and ultimately that's just going to help all your tackle, terminal tackle, just last as long as possible. Now we have everything in the interior all ready to go. We have our shore power cable unplugged. And something that I suggest, if you guys are getting a boat or you just bought a boat, always keep your boat connected to power. And the reason why is just because you never wanna be in that situation when you're going out on the boat and your batteries are dead. And plus, when you keep your boat plugged into power, you keep it on a tender, ultimately it's just going to help your batteries to last as long as possible. Believe it or not, I've gotten, on our previous boat, I got about five years out of our batteries we had in our boat. And I think a lot of that has to do just by keeping them plugged in on a battery tender or shore power. But that's a big thing. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trim our engines. And this is probably a very obvious one, but some guys, they like to trim their engines all the way up. I like going to about the halfway point. And the reason why I like going to the halfway point is just because it's going to help distribute weight on the transom as best as possible. If you go all the way up, then you're kind of putting a lot of stress on your actual trim units on the engines. But at the same time, 
We don't want to be so low to the point where we can potentially bang up our skegs or our props on the bottom or on the road or a speed bump hill, whatever it may be. Now, the last thing here, guys, is straps. Not only is it the law, but God forbid you were to get in an accident or you were to lose control, these straps, for the most part, are going to keep your boat fixed to the trailer. And this is a big rig. This boat is 15,000 pounds light. And at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we're taking as much precaution as possible. Now, before we actually hitched the trailer up to the truck, you'll notice that we had just about an inch to go here. And the key is to line that ball up perfectly underneath the coupler, especially with a boat this big. If you're not on that ball perfectly, you won't be able to close the coupler. Now, another big tip, is once you put the truck in park, put on your parking brake. The reason why is because we're on a decline here. So as soon as I put the truck in park, it wants to roll forward just say an inch, sometimes even two inches. And that two inches is the difference between getting this coupler to close or not. But by engaging your parking brake, that's going to keep your truck right in place and that's going to eliminate all the roll so that way you don't have to keep on getting in and out of the truck and making those adjustments but we were able to do that so what we did is we have our pin inside of here this pin is very important just because the last thing you want guys is this thing to pop up make sure to cross up your chains and there's actually a way to put these chains on your trucks if you notice we have them hooked from underneath and the reason why is say we were to hit a bump, if these pop up, they're not coming off. Obviously we have this little safety mechanism here, but say we didn't have this safety mechanism and some trailers don't have that. If we were to attach it this way, if we were to hit a bump, there is potential that this chain could pop up and come off. So we wanna make sure to hook these from underneath. Another thing is guys, make sure you have your trailer lights plugged in this is an important one and it's a huge safety thing as well and most importantly more than anything make sure this coupler is on right and you also have the correct size ball just because the coupler fits over top of the ball doesn't mean that it's necessarily the correct size so make sure you're always paying attention to these things last but not least this is a huge one and not a lot of people pay attention to this your trailer hitch is very, very important. This hitch right here is rated for 22,000 pounds. So I'm going extremely overboard. And this is something that you don't want to sacrifice when it comes to spending as much money as you may spend on a truck, a trailer and boat. So do not cheap out on your trailer hitch. Make sure you get a nice heavy duty trailer hitch. So if you notice here, our trailer is sitting nice and level. And this is a big thing. You wanna make sure that your trailer is leveled. That way weight is distributed along all three axles as best as possible. Now, the way that we do that is by using our drop hitch, turning it upside down in order to get the height that we need in order to get this trailer to sit level. Now, say for example, you have a lifted truck, you may need that drop hitch in order for that ball to be lower, but in our case, we need more height from our ball. So we took our drop hitch and we turned it upside down. Now, the reason why you wanna distribute that weight evenly, because first things first, it just doesn't look good. You don't want your trailer sitting like this and you don't want your trailer sitting like this. But the most important thing is, is you want to just distribute that weight as best as possible on the axles for safety reasons. And also if your trailer is sitting like this, what's gonna end up happening is your tires in the rear are going to wear down much faster than your tires in the front or vice versa. If your trailer's sitting like this on a decline, the tires in the front are gonna wear much faster than the tires in the back. And ultimately that's gonna cause a blowout. But let's go ahead, let's move the boat over to the garage and we're gonna start loading it up. I'm gonna show you guys how I do it in order to load your boat as best as possible because there is an art to loading your boat, believe it or not. So before we start loading the boat, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this situation. A lot of the times I get people asking me, hey, why don't you guys have a lift for that boat? It's so big, it'd make things so much easier. 
My most honest answer is, is we live on a flat here on the ocean, so we don't have the depth in order to get that lift underneath the boat to actually get it up out of the water. So we have to revert to having it up here on the trailer. And believe it or not, I actually don't mind trailering this boat because in some ways it actually makes things easier. So basically what I'm talking about here is we have the ability to take this 39 foot boat and back it all the way up against our garage or our house. So that way when we're going on these long range trips, rather than lugging everything down to the dock or even putting everything in our car and lugging it down to a marina, we can literally just take this boat, back it right up here against the house and we can load it with ease within basically, you know, 10, 15 feet at the very most, which is amazing. As you can see, we got everything we need right here. We got our rods, we got our cast nets, our coolers, you know, our boat cover, all of our deep drop stuff. And most importantly, we have an ice maker. The ice maker is a huge one, guys, because this is one less step that we have to take and one less thing that we have to pay for when it comes to going out on the boat. So having an ice maker and having ice handy is huge because we do a lot of traveling and we're always fishing. So we want to make sure to keep things as cold as possible. Another thing guys, when it comes to loading and preparing your boat, this one's pretty beat up, but I suggest getting some type of dock cart or little mini transportation system, so to speak, in order to get all your gear to the boat. This little thing right here is the difference between one trip and sometimes even 10 trips. So what I'll do is I'll load this up with ice, I'll load it up with my rods, my cast net, and this gives me the ability to go back and forth from the boat with ease and take the least amount of time as possible. But let's go ahead, let's start loading up and let's talk about the art of actually loading your boat. So right now the boat is loaded down and like I mentioned, there's actually an art to doing so. Now this is a very big boat, it's 40 feet long, so it's not going to be as sensitive to weight for the specific load that we have here today. However, let's just pretend that we're loaded down with food, drinks, ice, luggage, and we're going to the Bahamas. Now, depending on what we want, whether it's speed, fuel economy, or ride, we may want to manipulate the weight and position things in the hatches in the boat in different ways just to gain or deduct from what it is that we're trying to acquire. Now, in this situation, we have everything here towards the rear. And the reason why we do that is just because we want to try to get this bow up out of the water. And once we get that bow up out of the water, it's going to give us better fuel economy. It's going to give us more speed just because there's less boat in the water and the less boat you have in the water, the less drag. However, in some cases, if we have too much weight here in the back, what it can do is it can actually cause the boat to run very heavy in the rear. Therefore, the boat will not run level through the water and it's going to sacrifice our ride. However, on the flip side, if we wanna counteract that, obviously we can put weight up in the bow. And in some cases, this depends from boat to boat, this can actually make a boat run better. So for a simple day out fishing, I know it's gonna be nice and calm. I like putting all my weight here towards the back just because I'm gonna get the most speed, most fuel economy. However, if things are rough, we're gonna have some nasty seas. Maybe I wanna move some things forward in order to get that bow down and get the boat to ride a little better. Every boat is different, every captain is different. So what I suggest is play around with it. Maybe go out some days, put things in the back put things in the front, put things in the center, kind of distribute that weight in different ways in order to fine tune your boat and the way it rides, your fuel economy, your speed, and the manners for all the things that you desire. So here we are on the road. And one thing I can say is pulling a boat in a trailer this big can get nerve wracking when you're in tight spots. But for the most part, you know, just make sure you know what you're doing. And it doesn't matter how big the boat is or how small the boat is most important thing is just to understand the fundamentals of trailering understand that you know you are towing something behind you therefore you should never be riding anyone's butt you know you always want to give yourself plenty of room to stop just in case you want to stop or you need to stop another thing is is wide turns down here in the florida keys our roads aren't very big you know we don't have big turn lanes so sometimes 
I have to take up two lanes just to make a turn and that may make people nervous. They may think to themselves like, oh man, like I don't want to make people angry. And I think the same exact thing, but the God honest truth is sometimes guys, you just got to do what you got to do. You may be caught in these situations where it may feel a little uncomfortable, but the most important thing is just to trust your judgment, you know, pay attention and just stay calm because once you start freaking out, you get nervous, that's when you mess up. So it's a lot easier when you have two people to do this because they can just hand you that gas pump. But in this case, you gotta kind of crawl up here like a monkey. And what we're doing right now is we're just filling up the center tank. Like I was saying earlier, we're just going out for a simple day fishing, so there's no need to fill all three tanks in this boat. However, if we were to fill up every single tank in this boat, we would have 500 gallons. So right now, gas prices here specifically for Rec 90 is $3.75. If we wanted to fill this boat all the way up, that would be $1,879. So here we go, here's the fun part. Right now it's 2.30 and we have been doing this since 10 o'clock this morning. Mind you, we've been shooting throughout this entire process, so we've taken up a bit more time than we typically do, but it still gives you guys a pretty good understanding based on how long this process actually takes. We haven't even gotten bait, we haven't rigged rods, we also have not gotten sandwiches, we still have to go get drinks, there's still a lot we have to do once the boat actually gets in the water. But once we step off the dock and we hop into the boat, that's what makes this entire process worth it. What we ended up doing is we just filled up the center tank. We put in 210 gallons, so that's just shy of $800. And that's where having sponsors really does help because they help out tremendously with the fuel, fuel bills, excuse me, and all the other expenses that we endure throughout doing all of this. Now, one thing I would like to mention about fuel, always make sure to take more than you need because you never want to be in a situation where you are completely out of it because you're not getting home. In tomorrow's case, we'll probably burn, I don't know, 50 gallons at the most, but if we make that split decision and we decide, hey, we want to go do this or we want to go run here nor there, always take more than you need. So here we are pulled over on the side of the road and the reason why is because I'm taking off the straps and I'm gonna put in the plug. I don't like doing this at the boat ramp. The reason why is just because like I was saying earlier, this is such a big boat and when I pull up in there, there's potential that I could be blocking a lot of traffic that may be trying to flow through and especially I may be blocking smaller boats that could easily just go right around me while I'm doing this process. So I like to do this away from the ramp just to be as polite as possible and just make sure I'm ready to go and drop the boat in as soon as I get there. If you're a forgetful person, you may never even want to take your plug out. And ultimately when you're using the boat, you're always going to get water in there no matter what you're doing. So that's really like a preference thing. Like I said, if you got a forgetful mind and you find yourself forgetting to put your plug in a lot of the times, just don't even take it out. So let's go ahead, let's go to the boat ramp, let's pop her in. So when you understand the fundamentals of trailering and you understand how to back up, this can actually be very, very easy if you have the room to do so. But the key is just to back it all the way up until it's floating. And then once it's floating, we can just unhook it and drive it right off of the trailer. The key was to try to get the boat as close to the dock as possible because at this point, all I have to do is just step right onto the boat rather than climbing on from the front. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our engines. That way the boat is under power if needed. And at this point, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna unhook from the front back off, come back, tie the boat up to the dock, and then we're just gonna pull the truck and trailer straight forward. It's easy. 
use that. And we're just gonna back right off and park the boat right back on the dock. So as you can see, we're coming in real nice and easy. And something that's very important, especially with a boat this big, is you wanna make sure to go really, really slow. You do not wanna come in hot to a dock. Reason why is because this is 15,000 pounds, and in some cases, 16, 17,000 pounds pulling up, hitting one of these pilings. I can promise you the piling is gonna win every single time. So as you can see, we were just really taking our time there. And another thing I forgot to mention, guys, always have your dock lines ready. And reason why is because you just wanna save as much time as possible and you don't wanna leave anybody waiting. In our case here today, the boat ramp is slow, so we get to take our time. But that is something to consider if there is a lot of people around and there is a lot of people waiting. Now, the same thing we did in the rear, we're just gonna come here up in the bow and do the same exact thing. And whenever you guys are buying dock lines for your boat, try to get long dock lines. I think these ones here specifically are around like 35 feet. And what's great about that is you could take this line, throw it over a piling, and you can take it and come right back to your boat and tie off on the cleat here on your boat. And that is probably one of the best ways to tie your boat because if this dock weren't here, that would actually allow the boat to rise and fall with the tide because this line is not fixed. It can come up and down, which is awesome. But in this case, it's just very, very easy to go ahead and just tie the boat right up to this dock. But what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna take the trailer, park it in a spot, and then we're gonna run the boat back home, and that's it. We're ready to go fishing for tomorrow. So as you can see, we have that cut right there, and that is the only reason that we're able to get this boat to fit in here. If you guys remember earlier, we were talking about a lift, and it's simply just not possible to get a lift underneath this boat, especially on a low tide. Now, we have to be very careful coming in here because we want to make sure that we don't get outside of the cut because if we get outside of the cut, if we get outside of the cut, we will beach this boat and we will damage it. But as you can see, we don't have too much wind, not much current, so things are looking really good. And at this point, we're just gonna spin her right around. Gotta be careful because as you can see right there up against the seawall, it gets really, really shallow. And then of course it gets shallow up here and then all around us. So definitely gotta know what you're doing up inside of here. As we move back, we gotta trim up a little bit. Make sure we don't hit bottom back there. This is where having more than one engine really comes in handy because you can almost maneuver the boat without steering. As you can see, my bow is swinging over towards the right there. But at this point, we're just gonna ease her in real nice and easy. Something we'll do in the near future is do a how-to video based on how to dock a boat with more than one engine. That is it, guys. That is how you prepare, load, launch, trailer a 40-foot boat. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with us here again on Life by the Bow. Hope you guys learned something. But until next week, got to thank Undoes It. We'll see you guys then.